Hey, what's up? I'm here at the Pool of Reflections in Hyde Park in downtown Sydney. It's a beautiful day. It's Friday. I'm sitting here on this wonderful lawn, observing this gorgeous shrine of remembrance over the Pool of Reflections. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about um, issues with the American ideology. It's something that I've been thinking about a lot and I've talked about in previous videos and something that I really think is worth bringing up. Uh, for the longest time, one, we're taught as Americans that uh, not even overtly, not even entirely um, obviously that we are the best. It's not so much like, you are the best, like we'll sit you down in a class, you are the best. No, it's not like that. It's what they'll do is they'll, sh I mean, you see ads and you see things and it's like, oh, well, movies say this and they're all, a lot of these movies are set in America. So it's just like some, some kind of inherent value system that, because movies don't exist, movies are fake, but we still believe this value, this perceived value to be in America, like that it's, that it's better than the rest. When in reality, my question is, how do you look at the trillions of dollars in debt that we've accumulated? I think, we, I think we're the leader. I'm pretty sure we're the leader. Uh, how can you look at that and think to yourself, well, we're the best. We're the only ones that, that can do this, this, like we're the best. Like we are the only in the top. Like I just can't see how that attitude exists, which is why this, this whole thing of, like, I'm not saying you shouldn't hate your, you should hate your country, but like, Sometimes I think we have a, a greater sense of national pride, more so than we than we have deserved. For example, um, people that say America is the best country in the world, but they don't. How do you look at? How do you look past the debt? How do you look past all of the murders and all of the raping? Like I don't know any other country that has as often has shooting uh, people going into theaters and shooting people up. Pretty sure that's that mostly happens in America and you have to ask yourself why there's kind of a sense of pride we're told we're the best we talk about our rights we talk about uh, oh, you're free to do this you have the right to free speech you have the right to bear arms you have this you have rights as a human being and that's good I'm not saying I'm not saying like we shouldn't have rights however um, when you have that sense of that sense of pride that that it supersedes uh, logical analytics like your ability to analyze things when it supersedes your ability to analyze situations my question is how can you then say your country is the best so basically what I'm saying is there's a kind of a, a blind pride that goes into a lot of uh, American thoughts that, that we're the best and uh, it's I don't know I don't want to say we're the best I don't want to say we're the absolute worst but um, we're much more neutral I think than we give we lit ourselves on to be uh, of course, we've had a, a big influence in the world in like the Middle East recently and, and things like that. But currently, like we have so many issues that we just seem to keep overlooking, and it's this idea of pride, this national pride that we keep reinforcing over and over and over again, and it, and it kind of makes us blind to the issues that we have. Another thing is comfort. Uh, the thing that America has, like people would rather deal, people would rather experience comfort rather than actual growth and progression and uh, experiences. They, they prefer to be comfortable rather than pushing themselves to new experiences. And this is something that I've noticed a lot. A lot of, a lot of my American friends, oh, I don't really want to do this and this and this and this. But it's funny, all these European people that I'm hanging out with, they, they're all down to do stuff all the time. So, I mean, of course, it could be because I'm traveling as well, but they're all just down to do stuff all the time. There's no question. And yeah, it's pretty awesome. But severe comfort, takes a place where someone is someone is so comfortable that they can't break out of that comfort zone and that that comfort zone uh, is more important to them than personal growth that's just something that I noticed like I'd rather sit on a couch than go to a park and sit like all the time like, one in a while I understand but I just think these are a couple of the reasons why uh, this American ideology is like flawed like oh because you need that picket fence because you need this you need um, the picket fence, you need the house, you need all these things, and if you don't, you're less. That's another one. This whole superiority, inferiority thing. We build up this ideology like you must be the best at everything, and if you are not, you are nothing. And you may not think that. You may be like, oh, it's not really. For some people it is. For me it definitely was, and that's what I'm realizing now, traveling abroad, talking to these European people that are much more chilled out and much more calm and just comfortable with themselves. 
Um, I'm reaching a, another state of comfort on my own, actually, um, which is pretty cool. But uh, a lot of these other guys that I'm hanging out with, they, they don't care that they're not the best at something. They don't have this sense of insecurity. If they, if they try, they might fail and lose. They, they kind of just do it to do it, which is something that I, I really don't see, uh, at least where I am. Of course, these are all filtered through my perspective and through my experiences. Uh, don't sue me. But, um, yeah. With that said, it's a gorgeous day. Let me see if I can get some uh, parkour training done. And um, with that said, see you guys later.